Hi everyone and welcome to video number 9 of the topic of trigonometry. So today we're going to be dealing about how to use trigonometry to find the area of a triangle. So before today you may have known how to find the area of a triangle as being area is equal to a half times base times height. So how about using trigonometry? Can trigonometry help us to find an area of a triangle? Actually surely it can. So do you want to know how? Let's find out in today's video. All right, so we go on to the lesson. So we're going to learn about the area of a triangle. So we have known earlier on our mathematics journey to find the area of a triangle using its base and perpendicular height. However, this method is limiting as sometimes these two measurements may not always be given or known. So we can use a trigonometric formula for the area of triangles. So imagine as in the past we had a triangle like this you'd know the base the base right now is a b and the perpendicular height which is h or c d and you realize that uh there is a formula that says area is a half times base times height so let's first find that so to find the area of the triangle a b c in terms of sides and angle we can let d be the area so we can say that d will be a half times base times height so we have this formula that we know but we know this formula helps out when we know uh, we at least have to know what the value of the side is and we also have to know what the value of the base is actually you need to know the value of the base and the value of the height but now there will be cases where those two values base and height are not given and that's where we will need to know something else so we're going to derive a trigonometric formula to solve those kinds of triangles all right so if d is a half times base times height we can actually already see that d is equal to a half times a b times c d because a b right now is uh we, we a b is the base and c d is the height so when we substitute the values there we can see that we labeled a b as small c and it's because it's on the opposite side of the angle capital c so this is small c as the side and then the h is going to represent the height but we can also see that sine of this angle a is also going to be equal to h over b so this is what we know that if there was an angle here at a we can actually see that uh, the sign of that which is opposite over hypotenuse the opposite right now of the angle capital a is small h and its hypotenuse is small b so sine of a is small h over small b so therefore we can also see that when we make h the subject h will be equal to b sine a so we can actually substitute it here so now you realize we've chosen to uh, use this side that sine of capital a is equal to h over b small h over b but it is acceptable to use any of the sides we can also use to find it with the form of sine of capital b or the sine of capital c but for this example we're going to focus on sine of capital a but all of them would actually still work all right, so for this case, we can actually see that D is going to be equal to a half times sine times C times B sine A. Then we can now see that D, which is the area, shall be equal to a half B C sine capital A. And then this is what we come up with as a formula. If we make sine A the subject, we can see that it is equal to 2D over small B C. I mean lowercase B C. All right, so now we we're going to derive this so the same perimeter of a triangle abc first of all we know that the perimeter is the sides are uh, it's like the total of the sides of the of a shape so we know that it has small a small b and small c on the side so normal perimeter p would have been a plus b plus c but now we are more interested in the semi perimeter which is half of perimeter so that's why we have it uh, so the semi perimeter s is going to be equal to a plus b plus c divide by 2 because we're interested in half of the perimeter okay so now from cosine rule we're also going to focus on the cosine rule that involves cos of a because we want to get something that we can deal with that we can compare with this so we're going to focus on the cosine rule a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a now we know there are three different formats of cosine rule but we focus on this because now we can compare the cos of a to the sine of a in our calculations but if you had actually uh, found this in the form of uh, sine b you, here you would actually use the cosine rule where there is cos of b then if you had uh, focused here on where we had sine of capital c then we would have used the cosine rule where we have cos of capital c 
all right but this is what we're going to use for this example all right now we can see that if we make cos a the subject cos a is equal to b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc then from pythagorean identities we remember that sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to one so if we substitute in the values of uh, cos a and the values of sine a in we can actually see that we end up with this so now if we insert in the squares you can see that we end up with 4d squared because now we can see that right here that this 2 becomes squared which becomes 4 and then here we're going to keep it as it is this is bc squared and then right here uh, we're going to keep this as it is and there that's what we have so now we can see that the lcm of this is going to be 2bc squared and then 2bc squared divide by this we can actually say that we remain with a we remain with a, a, four squ a 2 squared which is equal to 4 and 4 times 4 is 16 so we end up with 16 d squared then we can see that this divide by this is 1 so 1 times this is that so it remains as it is so now when you cross multiply this is what we end up with all right so now we can see that there is something unique here so when you take this to the other side we can actually see that now this becomes a difference of two squares so now we can say this will uh, be equating to two different equal brackets that look like this so now that can be converted into this format so you can actually see that these are now the two different brackets that now we come up with and then now we can also see that next we just have to open those brackets so when open the brackets you can actually see that the this plus sign changes to a minus this minus sign changes to a plus then here i believe everything stays as it is because there's a plus sign on the outside and then right now we can actually see that now we can actually rearrange and combine some of these values to form other squared uh, brackets because there is actually a certain relationship because you can actually see that we have a 2bc here and we have a b squared and a c squared so when we arrange this we can actually say that we can arrange this to uh, a format that looks like that and then also here we can actually see that we can also come up with two other different brackets because you can actually say to can also arrange it and then it will become like that so we now have b squared plus 2bc plus c squared and then here we have a squared minus b squared plus 2bc uh, minus c squared and then i actually can see that i can pull out a minus and then i'll remain with b squared minus 2bc plus c squared and then right here you can see that grouping this together we end up with something like that then we can actually say that we can actually now see what this becomes now this is the same as a bracket of uh, b minus c squared as you can see and then this is also like b plus c squared all right so now that's what we end up with and now we also now another have another difference of two squared uh, brackets now this now we can actually see that now this can be converted into this now we have this and that then right here can see that there's also a difference of two squared so we have this and that and then next we can actually open this bracket so in open the brackets we know we can see that we have a minus b and a plus c because there is a minus sign here then right here this just stares there because this is a plus sign and then right here we end up with that and we end up with that on this other side all right so next we can actually see that if we uh arrange them properly let's let's bring the let's bring the this closer to that so that we have uh, the different values adding uh being combined together so we have a plus c minus b and then here we leave it as it is we have a plus b minus c then right here we have b plus c minus a we can also leave that as it is then we have a plus b plus c now we remember that the semi-perimeter is a b plus a plus b plus c is equal over two actually you can say the semi-perimeter s is equal to a plus b plus c over two and then we can actually see that it means a plus b plus c is equal to 2s so that means we can substitute a 2s where we have the a plus b plus c also we can also see that also from this formula we can also see that a plus b is equal to 2s minus c similarly we can also see that a plus c shall be equal to 2s minus small b and then lastly we can also see that b plus c is also equal to 2s minus 
a so now we're going to substitute in all these values for where we have a plus b where we have a plus c and where we have b plus c so when we substitute in we can actually see that this is what we end up with so we now have a 2s minus b here a 2s minus c here and a 2s minus a right here and then you can actually say this becomes negative 2b then we have a negative a minus 2c and a minus 2a and then we have this 2s here which you can actually bring to the front and then right now we can actually see that now we can factorize out a 2 in each of these three so we end up having a 2 here a 2 here and a 2 here so 2 times 2 times 2 3 times is equal to 8 and then 8 times 2 is 16 so we have a 16 s right there and then we can actually say we can divide 16 on both sides and then we will remain with that so remain with this square being equal to s into brackets s minus b bracket s minus c bracket s minus small a and then now we can see that when we find the square root we can actually say that d will be equal to root of those values so that means that area of course d represents area area is now going to be equal to root of that and then this is what we have as our formula now this is what we call the heron's formula so this is the formula we're going to be used to find area of triangles even when we are not given any angle at all so this is going to be helpful uh, for solving all kinds of triangles all right all right so now let's look at one of the questions All right, so we have question number one. We're being told the figure shows a triangle ABC in which BC is 20 centimeters, angle BST is 110 degrees, and angle SCB is equal to 30 degrees. Find the area of the triangle. Now, we know from the past that area is a half times base times height. Now, in this case, we don't know the base and we also don't know the height. So what do we do? Now, one thing that i can already see is we can find the base by our knowledge of sine rule so you know what let's first calculate what that base value is so calculating the side a b which is the base we can see that from sine rule we end up having that so these are the two parts of the sine rule that will be useful so you can see that we end up having 20 over sine 110 degrees is c over sine 30 degrees of course c represents side small c represents side a b so we know that now we can see that small c is equal to 10.64 centimeters and then now we know that the base a b is 10.64 centimeters all right so now let's find the angle capital b so we now know that we have all the angles of the triangle solved so you can see from angles of a triangle a plus b plus c is equal to 180 degrees so we can see that b plus 140 is 180 and then you can see that b shall be equal to 40 degrees now to calculate the area of the triangle now we're going to use the first uh the first format of angles culture of finding areas of triangle that would actually derive so we know that now area can be found in three different ways so we area can be equal to a half lowercase b lowercase c sine capital a or a half lowercase a lowercase b sine capital c or a half lowercase a lowercase c sine capital b so any of these can be useful now for this example we are going to use we're going to capture the area from a half lowercase a lowercase c sine capital b but with any that you use you'll still get the same answer so now this is what we end up with. So you can see that area shall be equal to a half times 20 times 10.64 times sine of 40 degrees. So this is what we end up with. And then area shall be equal to 68.4 centimeters squared. And that is how we find the area of such a triangle. All right. So question number two, we're being told find the area of the triangle ABC whose sides are AB is 7 centimeters, BC is 8 centimeters, and AC is equal to nine centimeters so the first step to solve this is we're going to sketch that triangle so we end up having this triangle looking like that now this is an example of a triangle whose sides are unknown and of course the height is also unknown so what are we going to do so we're going to be making use of the heron's 
formula. So that's where the Heron formula comes in. But we, before you use the Heron formula, we first need to know what the semi perimeter value of the triangle or S is equal to. So we know that S is A plus B plus C over 2. Now you can see that it becomes 8 plus 9 plus 7 over 2. Then you end up having 24 divided by 2, which is equal to 12. So now we know what the semi perimeter value is. So now we can make use of the Heron's formula to find the area of this triangle whose angles are unknown and of course whose height is also unknown. So we now can see that area shall be equal to that. So we just substitute in the values and then now we end up with that. And then we end up having root of 720 of offs. root of 720 is 26.83 centimeters squared and hence we found the area of that triangle abc all right so here are some trial questions you can try out to find and uh, perfect your knowledge of this section of trigonometry so i've given you some four questions to try out and i've also given you the answers so that you can compare and make sure you're on the right track thank you so much for watching Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video really, really helped you. If it did, feel free to leave a like on the video and then feel free to share with all your friends so that they can also be inspired and it could also be a blessing to them. If you're new to this channel, I encourage you to join the community by subscribing and then make sure to hit the notification bell so that you get updated every single time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. See you all in my next video.